Leibniz has, for a while now, been the biggest single gap in the philosophy information available on this channel. Let's fix that. Now, to be honest, this video will largely be just some introductory observations drawn from the notes for my grad school comps exams. So Leibniz is a German philosopher of the 1600s and 1700s. He disagrees with John Locke on the issue of innate ideas, ideas uh, always and automatically built into our minds. Now, that's, that's one, one tiny point on his epistemology, but let's talk about his metaphysics. Descartes had left us with the problem of explaining how the mind and body interact. Spinoza's solution was that mind and body actually are part of the same substance. Leibniz offers this solution. The universe is made of monads, and a monad never interacts with anything else at all, so no problem. Now, um... What is a monad? Let's, uh, let's see if we can explain that. You just keep your monads to yourself, quick student in the Intro to Philosophy course. True story, but it was, it was not I who said that it was a classmate. What is a monad? It's a mind. Every monad has some psychic life. Uh, not, not psychic in the uh, sense in which uh, most of your results on Google will probably be if you search for psychic psychic things, psychic people on the internet. No, um, we mean mental life. Every monad is a mind. It's a thing. It's a substance with mental life. Now, some monads don't have um, a particularly high form of mental life. The higher monads do. We are higher monads. We, human people, our minds are very high monads. Higher monads can enter into a relationship with the chief monad, which is to say we can know God. Monads are minds, the higher minds of which can know God, and a monad is a thinking substance. And monads are simple. That is to say, they are atoms. Now, this doesn't mean they're easy to understand, and it doesn't mean they're those little things made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. That's a, that's a different kind of uh, use of the word atom. This is the word atom in the classical etymological sense that we're talking about here. A monad is an atom, which means a monad is without parts. A monad is a perfectly unified whole without parts. It is a thing which cannot be divided. That's what a, an atom, uh, in the traditional etymological sense of the term, actually is. So, a monad is an atomic mental substance, and it never interacts with anything else. Now, there is an infinite number of monads in the universe. God is the chief monad. And monads do not interact. They may appear to interact, but this is only the reflection of a pre-established harmony. That is to say, God set up all the monads so that their perceptions would correspond. So if I meet you face to face, you'll have a perception of my face at the same time as I have a perception of your face, but we do not actually see each other. In a sense, we do not actually meet. No monad ever meets another. But that's okay because of the pre-established harmony. Our perceptions will perfectly align according to God's arrangement of the perceptions of all those monads. Now, what about matter? What about the body? What about physical stuff? Now, there actually is such a thing as matter in Leibniz metaphysics. The, uni the universe is made of monads, but not monads only. There is also matter. The mind has a body. Every mind has a body. And just as there is an infinite number of monads in the universe, there is also an infinite number of bodies. This is because matter is inherently divisible. There is no size of matter so small that it cannot be divided into smaller units. The only true atoms are the monads, not anything made of matter. So every body, every physical object, is made of an infinite number of smaller physical objects. Now, each of these objects has its own monad. And uh, like one monad and another monad never interact, the mind and the body never interact either. Now, two more points are necessary to introduce Leibnizian metaphysics. First, everything is necessary, but we are free because freedom is our ability to do what we want to do. Everything happens by necessity, but we are still free because freedom is not your ability to do one thing or not do it. Freedom is your ability to do what you want to do in the Leibnizian understanding. Uh, in contemporary terminology, we would call Leibniz, therefore, a compatibilist, someone who thinks that freedom and determinism are compatible, because he defines freedom not as the ability to do or not do a thing, but as the ability to do what you want to do. Now, second, this is the best of all possible worlds. 
God considered all the possible circumstances he could have brought about, and then he brought about only those which added to the greatest perfection. Because God is perfect, God makes the best of all possible worlds. Now this is a very short overview of a whole lot of metaphysics. Let's move towards actually looking at one of his writings. This here is the Hackett translation of the Discourse on Metaphysics, a very fine little Leibniz book. This particular volume also includes other essays. One of those is the Monadology, a nice little summary of the world as Leibniz understands the world. In this translation, the Monadology is only 14 pages. It's a terrific introduction to Leibniz. I don't actually recommend it, at least not ideally, by itself. I would recommend uh, for an introduction to Leibniz reading it and the discourse on metaphysics. Still, at 14 pages of some magnificent ideas from a magnificent mind, it does surprisingly well by itself. This little text, the monadology, if you can understand just part of it, is a dazzling introduction to a fascinating view of the world from one of history's greatest geniuses. Don't think of Leibniz as the crazy monad guy. He is, well, to say the least, he's smarter than you, and he is smarter than I am. And he is, um, how did I just say it, one of history's great geniuses. And uh, he's, he's worth knowing, um, um, if you can. He is worth knowing um, to some extent. Uh, according, to your, according to our abilities and our time, uh, it is worth knowing the thought of this great genius. So this video, up to this point, will appear in the Great Text and Philosophy playlist, if all goes well. In some subsequent videos for the, the Philosophers in Their Own Words playlist, I hope to look at some interesting remarks in the Monodology and then probably combine all the videos together for a more comprehensive video, this also appearing in the Great Text playlist. Thanks for watching, if you got this far. And if you're watching the compilation video, um, I hope you keep watching. See ya.